Hello there, welcome along. This is Business Connections Live. I'm Steve Harlan. Great to have your company as always. It is programme number 53. Number 53. And tonight it is pay-per-click management. That's what we're going to be talking about. Pay-per-click management. It's a really important part of what your business should be doing if you're trying to promote yourself online. Yes, there are a number of different ways that you can promote your business, that you can drive traffic to your website. But let's face it, it's a bit like standing in a darkened room. If you're in one corner of a room and the lights are turned off, nobody's going to know you're there. Pay-per-click is a great way of turning those lights on and letting people actually know that your business is about. My guest this evening is Dan Smale. He's the owner of The Client Factory and they are an internet marketing company. Uh, they do all sorts of things, everything from SEO all the way through. But tonight, we're going to be talking about pay-per-click. Dan, great to have you with us this evening. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Pay-per-click, it's a fascinating area, uh, but I would imagine it's surrounded by mystery, suspense, and also a lot of people spending a lot of money and getting it very, very wrong. Um, tell, us, tell us a little bit about your background, how you got into pay-per-click. Well, I started um, my first Google AdWords campaign when I was actually running another company about 15 years ago. And, uh, and I'm now very, very careful to tell people, please don't try this at home. <laughs> um, but at the time, there weren't many AdWords specialists. We didn't have any budget at all. So I learned AdWords. And then when it came time to move on, I realized we'd done very well uh, with the pay-per-click. So why not offer that as a service? So back in 2005, I set up the client factory and uh, initially we only offered pay-per-click and as you said earlier we've now branched out into SEO and, and other online marketing services. These are all the dark arts though, these are the mysteries. Uh, a lot of businesses think they can do pay-per-click, a lot of people think they can do SEO, but they really are the, the mysteries of the internet, aren't they? And I suppose, what, just to find the difference before we get into pay-per-click properly, because we've had so many phone calls from people saying, tell us more about pay-per-click, but just to find the difference between pay-per-click and SEO. Okay, well, quite simply, most of you, your viewers, I'm sure, will have, uh, have used Google search at some time or other. And any time you go onto Google, there are a number of results on the page. So you've got usually at the top of the page, the top three, sometimes it will be only one, but usually it will be three, are adverts. They are pay per click. So the if we just look at this right. page here, yeah, sure. we've actually got a page on the laptop, and you can see here. So these ones here, above that line. They've now. Very recently, they changed them to actually put that little yellow ad box to define that it is an advert. All right, so that there... They, they used to be a bit more crafty about it and just put sponsored link in such pale writing that you couldn't see it. <laughs> but uh, now you can see quite clearly that that top one is an ad. Yep. Then you've got a line underneath it. So in this case, they are only showing one. And then below that, those are the natural listings. So SEO is what you do, as I'm sure your other ex SEO experts have said on previous programs, to push your website up the natural listings. Pay-per-click is what you do when SEO either hasn't worked yet mm -hmm. or doesn't work to get yourself a presence on search engines like Google. That's the search side of pay-per-click. There's, there's a lot more to it than that, but I'm sure we'll mm -hmm. come on to that later. So also, you notice that down the right-hand side, there were also adverts, just says ad at the top, not by everyone, but all of those are obviously ads. So all of these down here are the Everything paper, down are paper the is ads. And then if you scroll down, I don't know whether you'll find any on this page, perhaps not, but sometimes they've now started, no, not on this one, sometimes they've now started putting up to one or two at the bottom as well. So Google do like to monetize their, their pages. Mm -hmm. What you will also see for different types of searches, not that one because it's not a product, but if you, uh, an example I'm probably going to use a lot today, if you type yeah. in micro scooters. Micro scooters. Yeah. Okay, so you see the, the images on the right hand side there, the pay per click ads as well. So this is uh, comparatively new actually, isn't it? They've been around for, for a little while. They've just, just actually changed. They used to be called product listing ads. Google has now called it Google Shopping. There is, a, is actually a Google Shopping channel but the ad, the ad content is now called shopping ads as well. And that's really what we're talking about. We're talking about these ones that are on the right and at the top. That's the what right, the top, the bottom. Sometimes when you see uh, a listing come up with a, a map listing places, sometimes those are, are ad related. So Google does do its best to monetize mm. as much of the page as it can, apart from the natural listing. So back to the original question, difference between pay-per-click and SEO. 
there are lots of differences. Some of the, the most important fundamental is that pay-per-click is virtually instant. You can set up a pay-per-click campaign and you can be number one on Google in five minutes. It's not, as you said earlier, an arcane art in that respect. Any idiot can do it. The question is not, can you get there? The question is, can you afford to be there? Can you monetize it? Can you make a profit out of it? So when people come to you, what, what is the big mistake that they make? Is it, is it very much a case that everybody thinks they can do it, but in fact they can't do it? Any idiot can get onto Google using pay-per-click, but they often get onto Google for the wrong things. They pay too much, they don't pay enough. Um, there's a whole myriad of mistakes. The biggest mistake they make is not coming to me in the first place, Steve, obviously. Very good, yes. Uh, uh, nice plug, by the way, if you don't <laughs> mind me you. saying. Uh, so if that's the first big mistake, what's, what's the big mistake that they make when you, when you meet them initially? They say, listen, I've tried using pay-per-click. It doesn't work for me. It, in cases where we're re reviewing an existing campaign and they've had a go, as many people do, to try and save a bit of money, um, Quite often, they've just learnt the basics. And to learn how to do Google AdWords, I think the Google Ad AdWords uh, Partners exam material takes something like about 30 to 40 hours to read. And then you've got to get familiar with it, you've got to practice it. Most small businesses, and even some medium-sized ones and large ones, they don't have the man hours to actually learn how to do it properly. Setting up an AdWords campaign, you can do in about 15 minutes. It's quite simple to set up a simple one ad, one account, one campaign, one ad group. And that's what a lot of people do. They just create everything and stick it in one ad group. And they've got all these different keywords and they don't relate to the ad. Well, they've only you, created you, one ad. You said so much there. You said AdWords, you said uh, keywords, <laughs> you said, I mean, and, I mean let, let's, let's go right back to the basics then. When you define AdWords to me then. So Google AdWords, is the platform for selling the advertising inventory on, on Google. So if we take a step back even further from that and say pay-per-click, mm -hmm. a lot of people think that pay-per-click is Google AdWords and vice versa, of course it's not. Pay-per-click is simply the way that you pay for the traffic that you get to your website, as opposed to what preceded it, which was pay per thousand views. Right. So. Google didn't actually invent pay-per-click. It was a company called Overture. Google quickly adopted it and put Overture out of business, as, as they do. And um, they really refined it. So now the main platform for pay-per-click is Google AdWords. And within that plat platform, there are different types of pay-per-click. So what most people think of as AdWords and pay-per-click is in fact search marketing and showing ads to people that are searching for what you do. But an equally big side of Google AdWords and pay-per-click is display marketing. You're still paying per click, you're only paying when somebody clicks on your ad and visits your website, but there's no search involved. You've chosen a demographically targeted audience perhaps, or you've chosen to show on certain websites because they're related to your product and service. If, for example, you're a you're selling cars, you might um, show on websites that are about traffic congestion or about um, tyres or whatever. Now this is related to, to, to the, the product you're selling. Now this is something that you can do on YouTube, can't you? You can actually yep. put together an inline video ad for your business. And then what you can do is you can say, I only want it to be shown on this channel or before this particular video is played. Yep. And there are those little ones where the, the five seconds come up and if you're not interested, you press the five second button and then you move on. But the thing that's interesting about those ones are that Unless, unless the person watches the entire ad, you don't get charged for it. If they watch the first 30 seconds or thereabouts... Once they get beyond a certain point, you that's pay it. for it. You, you pay for it. Yeah. And so is it, is it an expensive way to actually raise profile? I mean, there's something that I, I read in uh, the show prep notes that, that, you, that all our guests write for us, and you sort of said, if it is not self-funding, then you shouldn't be doing it. Cool. Or is that a case of, if it's not self-funding, then you're actually doing it wrong? Very much so, yeah. Uh, there, there are exceptions. Some people don't do it for a direct return. Some people are doing it to build brand awareness and it's less easy to, to monetize it. There's no direct sale involved. They actually just want thousands of people to the website because they're trying to build a brand, trying to build awareness. They're perhaps trying to get 
number of people to view what they do online, etc. So they're not actually, um, it's not self-funding because they're not monetizing it directly that way. They may be getting sponsorship funding or whatever. Um, but in terms of the more obvious selling a product or service, pay-per-click is something that you should be able to some degree to track. And that in itself, we could talk about that for a whole program. Um, if you're an online sh shop, an online retailer, e-commerce, then the click can be tracked right the way through to the sale. And with a number of clients, we're able to say, that's what you spent on pay-per-click last week. That's how many sales it got you. That's the actual total revenue from sales. They can then work out the profit margin on that. They know that if the sales, the profit margin is higher than the cost of acquisition, it's working for them, happy days, keep doing it until you reach that diminishing point of return where it's becoming less cost effective. Do you, do you get people to say to you, look, I've, I've tried it, I had a bit of a dabble, it cost me a fortune, didn't work, or the, the, who come to you? All and the that, time, and, yeah. And that's their problem. Yeah, we, we love that because the, with, without being at all arrogant, I've never come across a campaign that we couldn't improve. There are some that have been done really well in-house in and to be honest, there wasn't enough work for us to say, yes, okay, we'll take this over for you, but we could still give them a few pointers. But the majority of them, because they just don't put the time in to learn how to do it properly. And Google's default settings are all about the most traffic. And it's not about the most traffic, it's about the most cost-effective mm. traffic that produces results. So there are different matching types within AdWords, broad match, broad plus, phrase and exact. The default setting is broad. Broad is that word plus any other words, plus any similar words, plus any misspellings, <laughs> plus anything that Google thinks is remotely interesting. Well, that's going to cover everything then, isn't it? Yeah, and they can show it, they can show it to virtually whatever they like, and they do. And, and that's where people lose a load of money, because at the end of the day, in the interface, it just shows, let's say, for example, they put in micro scooters, it will show that they had a thousand clicks for micro scooters. Unless you know where in the system to dig deeper and look at the actual keywords that drove those searches to your site, you won't see that out of those thousand, 50 of them were looking for petrol scooters, 100 were looking for electric scooters, which you don't sell and you're getting all the wrong traffic to your website. Well, we're going to talk more about this in a few moments' time. We're going to come back to it because we're all going to be talking about the kind of words that you should be targeting because there are a whole myriad of different ways of doing it. It's, it's Boolean, was it Boolean algebra, isn't it? Algebraic kind of stuff. I mean, I'm making it, I'm making it sound complicated now, aren't I? But really, at the end of the day, it is common sense. And it's quite interesting. Just before the program, I had a word with Dan and, and we were talking about what should we call the show. And it was interesting just in these choice of words for instance, we're calling it pay-per-click management right now. Pay-per-click management. Now, by doing that, Dan said to us, well, what you're now looking for is, you're not looking for people who are actually just trying to sort out. Well, you, you explained, because you explained it very well when you said pay-per-click yeah, management. The, as we discussed earlier, the, the nuances of, of the keywords are everything. Identifying a phrase that indicates an intent to buy, an intent, uh, a real desire to look for a service or a product, rather than just looking for information or browsing. And that's the difference between somebody typing in pay-per-click, could mean they're just looking to have a quick look on the internet, what's it all about. Um, pay-per-click management, they are looking for somebody to offer them a management service. So that's exactly the sort of customer that we want. Very interesting, isn't it? And we're going to be talking more about maybe those different keywords that you should be thinking about. We're going to try and simplify it. It is, I think, at times a complicated subject. It can get very confusing. And at the end of the day, every mistake that you make is going to end up costing you money. Because when people start clicking through on your ads, if they're the wrong ads and they're going to your site, yes, in fact, the campaign has been very successful. Unfortunately, it's been very successful for Google because they're <laughs> the ones that's making all the money. And unfortunately, you're not. So we'll be talking a little bit more about that. I'll tell you what, before we get on to that, though, let's uh, have a look back at what happened in last week's program. Very exciting week. This Friday, we're going to be up in Wolverhampton, in fact, at the, uh, the Business Networking Show. It's in Wolverhampton, at Wolverhampton Racecourse. It's going to be a fascinating day. We're going to be broadcasting live from the event. Really, really looking forward to it. Uh, looking forward to meeting you. Dan's actually going to be up there. He's going to be joining us on our Business Connections Live uh, mobile studio, to call it for a better name. So we're really looking forward to meeting you. 
if you're going along to the event. We're looking forward to talking to Dan again as well. But just to remind us what Brad was saying on last week's edition of Business Connections Live, here's Brad Burton. Now, our guest tonight is Brad Burton, the UK's number one motivational speaker, talking about the Business Networking Show, yeah. which takes place uh, next Friday, the 19th of September at Wolverhampton Racecourse. And also one of the keynote speakers, Debbie Huxton, she's the in inspirational and motivational speaker. She's going to be one of the keynotes who's going to be talking on the day. And it's just lovely to have the pair of you with us. Actually, the biggest thing right now is that most businesses aren't, aren't actually aligned to their values. They don't, so they've got a vision, they've got a mission, but actually, Lots of them are very confused about what their business goals are compared to their, their values, their brand values. None of it's in alignment. And when I speak to people and businesses, as Debbie said, very successful businesses, but they're not happy. Mm. And that's the bit where you need to align those and tie the ends up. So it's all sorts of problems. But if there's one fundamental uh, thing, I'd say for, for most businesses, it's more sales. And mm. more sales comes from confidence. If you've got confidence in your products, you've got confidence, 100% belief in your products, you're unstoppable. If you've got doubt about your products, if you've got doubt about mm. your business, doubt about your services, somebody who's not got doubt will beat you to the punch every time and that's what I'm about is about giving that belief and understanding are you aligned with your business do you really believe 100% in it a big businesses is understanding that it's not just about making money it's are they taking the right actions to make the money but also that success isn't just about the money in the bank account it's an inside job you know the reason I'm an expert now and this is what an expert is. An expert is someone who's made all the mistakes in a particular field. I've made every single mistake, I've paid the price. And this is the great thing when I work with clients or we work with businesses, is they don't have to make the mistakes because I've paid for them already. They've created desire. They create desire. That, yeah, I don't need to go into the Apple store when they launch next year and say, hello young man, can you tell me the benefits and the features of the Apple, Apple Watch? No, I'm already ready to buy. That's what you've got to do with business. Yeah. Create the conditions where people buy. And this is what we do in our organization. And this is what we do uh, with the, the business networking show is to actually make it so it's desirable that people want to come along. So when you've not got a superstar salesperson having to sell something to, to be talking about networking, talking about business, and actually once again, trying to find that 100% belief in people. Because if you've not got 100% belief in your business or, or what you're doing, somebody who has got 100% belief in your same profession will beat you every single time. So if you've not got 100% belief in what you're doing, maybe you need to change it to something you do. And I'm going to be talking to all those people that have got that little bit of self-doubt about their business, a little bit of self-doubt about who they are and how they're showing up in their business. Because you know, it's that thing behind the thing mm -hmm. that holds people back. And quite often, you know, people are wearing masks out in the business arena. And it's really nice to know that you're normal. That was one of the biggest things that, mm -hmm. um, you know, when I first started working with Brad, that um, I could bring to the table is to understand that actually you're absolutely normal. Are you willing to risk it all? Right? And it's always a good question. Whenever you're, you're, you're running a business or you're doing anything, Ask that question, are you willing to risk it all? And if the answer is no, then why are you willing to risk it all? Why are you doing the things you're doing? So you need to change it. That entire, that sentence changed my entire direction for the last three years. And that's what that box just stacked with. The, the first thing about anything, you know, when, when you, you just said, well, once you've changed your mindset, that's the hardest part. Because most people, once they've changed their mindset, they understand that it's about managing that change. But it's to get to that place of change. And it, the, so a mistake is a mistake once. You make that mistake again, it's become a choice. Ugh. Ugh. And so then you have to question why are you making those choices? One of, one of the things I was about to say then is, that, for instance, people will work, they're so stressed out, so they're smoking more, they're overeating, they have a bottle of red wine in the evening, and before they know it, they're having two bottles of red wine, but there's a level of entitlement because I've got the business moving. And actually, maybe, just maybe, this is the thing, you almost wrap up business success, and, and that actually there's a level of entitlement that actually ends up creating you more problems than it actually solves. That's what I've encountered with a lot of business people who've had massive success, but they overeat, they're oversmoking, they've got bad health issues. And, and the health, is so far down the pecking order, uh, you know, if you said business success or health, these guys are saying business success, and it's only when you're close to losing your health that all of a sudden you realise that what was important wasn't the business. So I think the first thing I'd say is there's no shortcuts. It's going to be hard, it's going to be tested. And understand this, why the reason, understand the reasons why you do the things you do. And also, where is your GPS for your life programmed to? What's your final destination? Where do you want your life to be? Same goes for your business. Program your GPS for your business, because if you don't, how do you know when you get there? Don't waste this opportunity. Don't waste this opportunity to create a life that you love. Why wait a lifetime? I'm going to be at the Business Networking Show. Come and say hi. I'd love to talk to you. If you've got any challenges, happy to help find some solutions. You know, life can be whatever you make it. It's just a choice. 
fascinating guy, Brad Burton, the number one motivational speaker. And uh, we're going to be joining him up at the Business Networking Show in Wolverhampton this Friday. And we're looking forward to doing that too. Uh, my guest tonight is Dan Smale. He's the owner of The Client Factory, uh, an internet marketing company. We're talking about pay-per-click management tonight. We're looking at some of the mistakes that maybe you're making if you are thinking about putting together a pay-per-click campaign for your business. It's all about driving traffic. That's what we want to see to our website. We want to see an increase in traffic. Uh, we want to get some return though on that investment, our ROI. That's what we're looking for. And the trouble is that sometimes if you get this wrong, you can end up spending an absolute fortune, but you get no results from it. Uh, Dan, let's, let's look at some simple rules that we should be considering then when it comes to putting together our pay-per-click campaign. Where do we start? What should we be doing? What's the first thing that should be going through our head? We don't go straight away to Google <coughs> and go, right, going to start a campaign. How much am I going to spend? There's a little bit more thought in, in, involved, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, and there's a lot of businesses I'm sure that won't want to hear this, not everybody should be trying to get onto page one of Google. It's sort of self-fulfilling to a point in that you really have to deserve to be there. You can spend all the money you like, whether it's SEO or pay-per-click, you can get to number one. But if you don't have a product or service that people want to buy, and at a competitive price, you don't have any unique selling points, you're not going to be able to monetize that. So business owners need to do their homework first. They need to look at who they're up against online as opposed to who they're up against on the high street. On the high street, they may have a fairly captive local audience and they may not need to worry so much about price. But when they go online, it could be a totally different ball game. So if you're 10% more expensive than everybody else and you're selling a blue widget, blue widget's 495 everywhere you go, you better not only be number one, you better have some sort of competitive advantage. If there's no difference between them, then that's got to be price. But that, so that do is, your that homework is fundamental, first. isn't it? Well, you would think so, it is. But uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of businesses that just don't do the due diligence first. They don't think, can I compete? Who are my competitors? Do your research. Think about what the most obvious search terms are. And, and in a lot of cases, the, f the foundation search terms are the most obvious. So for micro scooters, we looked at earlier, the obvious term is micro scooters. So look at the people that are coming up, both in the current ads and on the natural listings, look at what they're offering, look at what you're offering and think to yourself, if I can get there, can I compete? Why is somebody gonna buy from me? And but if, if you we, can't if, answer that, then don't waste your money. But if we look at the, the micro scooters there, we've already said that's a very broad brush, isn't it, micro scooters. So we could be talking about maybe petrol driven. And are you, I mean, they call the expression, don't they, long, long tail um, searches, don't they? So we've yeah. got micro scooters sitting up here. Is it a case of that you go, OK, micro scooters, that's my search results. And then do you start looking down here and drilling into mini micro scooter, children's scooter with T-bar handle. Are you looking for that long tail description yes. for your ad word? Yes and no. And there are reasons to look for a longer tail keyword. There are many reasons. Uh, it can be more cost effective. There will probably be less traffic. People are lazy when they search. People will type in two words every time if they can avoid typing in three or four or five. Mm -hmm. There are some exceptions to that, more sophisticated searches, but the majority of people, if they can get away with typing in scooter, they'll type in scooter. Unfortunately, then they will get petrol, everything, electric, everything. So people will qualify it up to a point. Sometimes they'll qualify it by location. If it's a service, if they're looking for a solicitor, they might type in solicitor Kingston rather than just solicitor. But the, so the starting point is always the broader search term solicitor. And interesting points on that, whilst with SEO, a local solicitor could never get to number one on Google. It's not gonna happen. They would have to have an unlimited budget. There will be 10 million results on Google for solicitor and they couldn't monetize it even if they did get to number one because they can't do business with people in Inverness because it's a face-to-face -face type of business. But using pay-per-click, they can be number one for solicitor for anybody that's searching within five miles of Kingston. Now that's one of the big fundamental differences between pay-per-click and SEO, it's limitations. So we can target that broader search term, but we can then temper it by limiting it geographically. 
but getting back to the long tail keywords so yes mini micro scooter is the longer the tail phrase the far greater the statement of intent that the searcher is making the less general the less vague um, the more serious about the search they're looking for something very specific so yes of course you want to grab those people and you want to take them to exactly the right page so AdWords allows you to do that so you set up your broader campaign for micro scooters you then set up your campaign for mini micro scooters and if somebody searches mini micro scooters you take them to the category page for the mini straight away if somebody searches for blue mini micro scooter you take them straight to the product page for the blue mini micro so that's the way that you use the longer tail keywords to deliver the searcher to exactly the right part of your website and that's where you get the real successes when you're when you do your your ad then on the right hand side and say we're, we're saying it's a, a micro scooter blue should we say mm. um, is that still going to come up with the general conophony or, or collect strange word isn't it yeah, that's a word yeah cacophony yeah that's the word, that's the um, word. is it still going to come up with the general collection of other searches that you've actually got there or will it only come up if it's micro scooters blue well that's how you structure the campaign so there's we could talk for hours about that because it's about the broad matching phrase matching exact matching so proper campaign structure is important so that your keywords are not competing with each other you don't want your micro scooters keyword competing with your mini micro scooters keyword and you're bidding against yourself mm -hmm. um, all the same with the the other phrase with blue in mini micro so in your micro scooters campaign you would put negative mini negative blue so that ad group doesn't compete with that ad group uh, just one final question on that as well then you, you talked there about driving for sales and you talked about driving for traffic if you're looking for a generalist a generalist traffic to be going to your website is there a different technique that you would use or are you still looking at long tail search results and things like that if it's just about numbers let's say you've got a website that you have uh, Google AdSense on there so you're showing Google's ads Mm -hmm. and you may be showing other banner ads so it's about the number of people that you get to your site that's how you make your revenue not by selling anything it's by the number of visitors then you're probably looking for the maximum number of visitors at the lowest possible cost per visitor so then you're not going to target specific phrases you're going to to look for the sort of phrase that is a, informational that other people are not going to be bidding against because they can't monetize it so therefore the cost per click is low on those phrases and that's where you get your volume traffic for it at less cost. If you're starting off and you're, you're starting to do this, what, what kind of budget should you be looking at? I mean, do you trial it? Is there you know, kind of a taster budget? Do you, how, do you mon how do you make certain that you're not ending up spending a small fortune on it because it is the one thing that comes back from a lot of people that do try it how do you protect yourself against this um, the best way to answer that is to give you the uh, and i think you saw it on the video on my website but mm -hmm. updated the the micro scooters case study as an example we started work for them nearly 10 years ago and they built a great website they had an e-commerce website they had no traffic to it whatsoever nobody thought to tell them they actually, actually had to market it so let's just build it and they will come and of course they don't so they were selling three scooters a week through the website and that's because mrs smith was telling mrs jones about it and we started with an adwords budget of 10 pounds a week right and they sort of looked at me as if i was crazy and said is it even worth it dan i said well you know if you want to spend 50 let's spend 50 but I understand that budget's tight let's start with 10 week one they spent seven pounds 80 of their 10 pound budget and they sold 13 scooters instead of three and the point of this Crikey, is that's a return isn't it average basket in those days was about 50 pounds i won't tell you what the profit margin was <laughs> <laughs> but they were making a very good return on their seven pound 80 plus my modest fee so can we spend 20 pounds next week dan uh Fast forward nearly 10 years, last year they spent about £164,000 on Google AdWords alone and that produced £4.1 million worth of trackable sales. Now we obviously can't do that for every business, they have the right product, the audience is UK wide kids, it's massive, they're not the cheapest, they're probably the most expensive kids scooter on the market, uh, that's their USP. 
mm -hmm. quality rather than price. So that's how you should grow a campaign organically. If, it's, if it works, spend more. If it doesn't work, stop doing it. I don't want to run campaigns for people where it's not working and probably three out of ten don't because they can't compete online, they haven't got the right pricing structure, they haven't got a USP so people get there and they just move on to the next site. But if you have a good product or service and you have something going for you that you want to get the message out there, pay-per-click is a very quick and easy way to do it. And as I say, if it works, do more. There will come a point where you can't do more. There's, there, there isn't enough search. You start to water down the search terms. So you start to go for the broader ones to get more volume and they don't convert as well. So then you have to back off those because now you're wasting budget. So it's trying little bits. And it may be that micro scoots have different products on there. They try to sell skates, inline skates, but their core business is scooters. The name of the URL is micro scooters. So it doesn't convert as well. So you try a campaign like that, but it doesn't com convert, back off and stick to what you are selling. So is it very much a case then that people do get hopelessly confused when they are trying to put it together? They don't understand exactly what they're doing. And do they step away from traditional SEOing of their website and then end up relying completely on buying the audience, the pay-per-click audience? I don't think so. I, I've, I've got a little soapbox issue that I can't believe that more people in the be, industry... Be our guests and get up on that soapbox. More people in the industry don't bang on about this because it drives me absolutely bonkers. SEO, pay-per-click are part of the same online marketing mix along with social media. And for most businesses, it's a combination of those. And that combination, the emphasis will change over time. The most common mistake that I see is people starting with SEO. They build a website and they start plowing money into SEO. Cart, horse, get it the right way round. Start with pay-per-click for several reasons. Most importantly, because SEO takes months. You're not going to get a result tomorrow. You're not going to be on page one of Google tomorrow. If you can afford having built, built your website to wait for six months before you get the volume of traffic in, then by all means, you still wouldn't start with SEO because of the second reason, which is what keywords are you using? What's your keyword strategy for your SEO? You've done your keyword research, great. What you haven't done is driven any traffic to your site using those keywords and, and found out whether you can actually make any money out of that. So you're embarking on what's a medium to long-term strategy based on guesswork. Pay-per-click, instant. So you set your campaigns up, you drive your traffic to your website, you monitor that, you track it, you analyze it, you look what the results are. If it's working, then you invest the money in SEO to reduce the reliance and cost of pay-per-click over time. But if you can't make money out of driving people to your website for micro scooters using pay-per-click, you can't make money out of using SEO to drive them there. It's the same visitors using the same search terms. It's very interesting. I mean, you, you, mentioned their, you mentioned their keywords. I think people get very lost in keywords. Is it keywords or is it keywords statements, and mini statements in other words? Keyword, word, what? words, phrases, you can call it people call it by by different names the the bottom line is it's any word or combination of words single plural even misspellings that can drive traffic to your website so let's uh we, we've talked scooters. Let's, let's take another topic, shall we? You, you can pick the topic because you've probably got examples in your head. Come up with an example of where we would start for a, a particular business. Um, I, well, let's a florist, for instance. A florist, is that too too broad? No, no. So we'll start with the florist then. The key words. If I was a florist and I was thinking, right, I want to grow my business. I want to do pay per click. Obviously, one of the things that can be important for a florist is going to be their local their local location and of course Google is set up for this local SEO and everything like that so they're, they're, they've got an advantage locally from their search that it's going to be coming up if they're a local florist to wherever the search is taking place but what would be the keywords that you would start looking at if you were looking at being a florist okay you don't don't so right on the on spot on now I'm putting people on the spot do you yeah. so okay so the florist themselves might start with a piece of paper and put down all sorts of things. They might put down geraniums, lilies, etc. All the different flowers. Bad idea. 
because there's no in, there's no in, intent that people want to actually buy them. They might want some seeds. They might want to know how often they need to water them. Way too general. So you want an intent to buy. So flowers delivered, flower delivery, uh, flower service, flowers online. Those are the sort of key words that you're going to start with. Something that indicates flowers for weddings, flowers for birthdays, flowers for Valentine's Day. What's the occasion? And you create different ad groups, different campaigns based around each. Now, when you say flowers, shall we say flowers for weddings, is it important the sequence of the words? Does that make a big difference? Or is it just a case of three words and other ways that you can say, I want it to be in this particular phrase? Well, it depends on your matching option. So if you've chosen exact match and the phrase is flowers for weddings, somebody's got to type flowers for weddings into Google for that to come up. If they type wedding for flowers, it won't come up. That's the point of exact match because there are, and I'm probably not going to be able to think of one off the top of my head, but there are cases where just changing the order of the words changes the meaning entirely and, and, and is indicative of a totally different type of search. So you've got to be careful of that. That's why they have exact match. Um, phrase match is those words but in any order. So if you don't mind which order they put flowers for weddings in, you, you'd use phrase. You'd use broad if you don't mind if flowers for birthdays comes up because mm -hmm. Google will deem that as similar enough to weddings perhaps. Are there words you shouldn't be using, do you think, in AdWords? Well, it depends on your business. So for example, if you're selling a quality product, you might want to put negative in cheap, cheapest because you're not going to convert those customers because you're not the cheapest, you know that you're not the cheapest. So you need to think about what, what searches would indicate the wrong type of client. So the first thing that we do then, we sit down, we get a piece of paper out and we look for a descriptive word, a nearly an action word. So what the business is and the action that, that we're, we're hoping that people will actually respond to, mm. which is a very good idea. So uh, cars for business. From the types in buy flowers, happy days, you know that they want to buy flowers. Yeah. So, so that's, that's an obvious search term. So that's good. So we're, we've now got our list. How many different sets of words and are there any tools to help you find those particular? Yeah, Google has its own keyword planner tool. They used to have, they've revised the, the way it works and they've also revised how you access it. You now only access it through AdWords. You used to be able to just Google it and go and anybody could use it. Now you have to add, have an AdWords account, uh, although that in itself doesn't cost you anything. You can just set one up, do your keyword research and then never activate it. Mm -hmm. um, Is that the tool that you use? Yeah. That's one of them, yeah. Right, because there are a number of tools out there, aren't there? Yeah, well, there's, uh, and again, uh, one, of the, one of the difficulties with small businesses having a go at this on their own is that to put in the, no, both the number of hours to do it and then the number of hours to learn how to do, not just use AdWords, but how to use keyword tools, etc., how to use Google Analytics, they've now got to put in an awful lot of time for something that they might be spending £50 a month on. They might have to spend 30 hours learning how to save themselves £50 a month. It really doesn't, doesn't stack up. So we use um, WordStream, which is a piece of software which does all sorts of wonderful things. We pay hundreds of dollars per month for that. You can't use that sort of software if you're a small business with a very, very limited budget. All right then. Uh We've now got the tools that we're using. We're using AdWords. Is it a difficult tool, do you think, to actually use when, you, when you're sitting in there? Difficult tool to use well because of the complexity of it. The matching options alone, then you've got the ads. Um, again, a default setting is to show to the display network. Well, there's a big difference between search and display. We touched on it briefly earlier. Search is somebody actually it's searching for your product. Display is it's a different type of strategy. Search is reactive. You're reacting to somebody searching for your product or service. Display is proactive. You're getting out there and you say, my audience will live on these websites, or these are the demographic uh, features of my audience, so I will show ads to them proactively and hope to stimulate interest. And there's a place for that, but the starting point should be search. When's the best time to get in front of somebody when they're searching for what you sell? 
The proactive side, the display side, works better if you have something that nobody's searching for. Maybe you've just invented something new or you've developed uh, an existing product and, and done something that there isn't really any search volume for it. So pay-per-click on the search side only works if somebody's searching for what you do. Is, is it, can you actually just go into Google, into, you know, just straight onto your Google browser and put in words and get some indication of what people are searching for by, by using that? You would need the, an ad tool like the, you the Google You would need AdWords to do it like tool, that. Yeah. So there's not, there's not a way around it then, so you can either use or, AdWords... Oh no, there's probably some other free ad tools out there. We don't, we, we use, as I say, WordStream and, and Google AdWords own, own tool. I'm sure there are some others. Um, I can't think of one off the top of my okay. head. That's okay. But you, if you Google keyword tool, you might find something uh, free that's usable. Okay, well listen, we'll, we'll come back. So we've got our keywords, we've now got our tool. The next thing is actually the implementation of our campaign. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Fascinating. I mean, pay-per-click, I bet you've been th sitting there thinking to yourself, already you're thinking about your pay-per-click campaign, and you're saying to yourself, do you know what, I... Um, never really realized that or maybe you've just been wasting money because your actual description that you are using in your pay-per-click campaign just isn't specific enough or doesn't carry that action what are you trying to achieve from it uh, i think the trouble sometimes with many businesses is that we're we're too close to our business we just tr truly can't see the wood from the trees and really what we're trying to say here is that maybe it takes a dan to come into your business to take a step back to look at what you're trying to to achieve to give you that clarity and maybe that's the advantage of going to somebody like the client factory to actually sort that out when it comes to getting your pay-per-click campaign completely put together uh, while we're talking about uh, things like this we'd like you to subscribe to this particular channel uh, there's a little link just up here on the screen uh, it will really help us we're looking for people to subscribe why should you subscribe well here's a couple of reasons why if you're a business owner and you need advice on how to make your business more successful, then Business Connections Live TV is just for you. Our leading industry experts cut out the guesswork for growing businesses. How to use social media, what to expect from your accountant, web design, SEO and so much more. Business Connections Live TV is here to give you the motivation you need to succeed. How you doing? My name is Brad Burton. I'm the motivational speaker that everyone's talking about right now and I'm on Business Connections Live. What a show. What a show. People, do check it out. If you're struggling with Facebook and LinkedIn. Most people that I meet are on LinkedIn. Virtually, you know, there's 14 and a half million people just mm -hmm. in the UK. Uh, I think the figures currently are 238 million people worldwide. But I would say that most of them don't really understand how to use it. How to present your ideas more effectively. Hello, I'm Philip Skinner, Shaw Walker Lees. A brilliant way to get message across. Um, I'm actually thinking that we might switch away from our quarterly newsletter to do a video and, and get it sent through to staff and clients. To generating leads and finding new business. Hi, I'm Jim McLaughlin, Managing Director of Business Development Company Axial and I'd just like to say what a pleasure it's been to have the opportunity to appear on Business Connections Live. Subscribe and be part of the Business Connections Live TV online community for free. Business Connections Live TV every Wednesday 6pm GMT or catch up on the Business Connections Live TV YouTube channel. Make certain your business is connected with Business Connections Live TV. So if you'd like to subscribe, now's your opportunity to do that. By the way, if you're out and about this Friday, don't forget, we've got the Business Networking Show. That's at Wolverhampton. It is the UK, uh, UK's largest networking event. Wolverhampton Race Course this Friday, the 19th. The main show sponsored there. Uh, Just Cash Flow, some of the speakers that are going to be at the show. Uh, the BBC's apprentice runner-up, Neil Clough, is going to be speaking. We're going to have him on the programme. Uh, Rachel, Brad, D. Uh, it's going to be there as well. Uh, Business Networking for Dummies, Author Tells All, Stephen Thomas. Uh, we've got a copy of his book sitting here too. It's a fascinating read. And uh, you may remember a couple of weeks back, in fact, uh, we had on the programme 
we were looking at the whole world of four dummies, uh, a Wiley brand. We were telling you how you should go about maybe putting your own publication together. We'll have a bit of a word with Stefan about that when we meet up with him at the show this Friday. We're going to be broadcasting live for the entire day. That's the Wolverhampton Racecourse this Friday the 19th. It is the networking show uh, across the UK. Do not miss out on that. It's going to be there. You're going to have a whole host of different speakers are going to be turning up. Uh, as I said, Brad Burton's going to be there. It's going to be a cracking show and we've got a complete outside broadcast studio there. There's speed networking going on. Uh, there's news as the largest bump table and uh, I mean four networking are really putting together a fantastic event there. Uh, you've actually been involved with Brad. You know Brad very well don't you? Yeah well I don't know him that well but we've, we've had lunch together on the other occasion. Um, I was an area leader until recently for four networking and I'm still a, an active member I think it's an absolutely great organisation. Brad's done a fantastic job. And in, indeed, I get a, an awful lot of my clients from for networking. This is interesting, isn't it? Because it is actually networking done properly, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Not that I'm saying that the other networking events don't no, do it properly. They indeed. just do it differently. And I go to a lot of other networking events as well. But I, I find that the one that produces the most business for me is definitely for network. When, when you're at the, those networking events and you obviously you've got to stand up and you go on about paperclip, what kind of reaction do you get from the other people who are networking at those events? Uh, is it a case of eyes up, being rolled up the air, but with one or two of them seeing the power of it, but many people not really truly understanding No, it. I think there's still an awful lot of people out there that haven't tried it yet. As I said earlier, that a lot of people make the mistake of starting with SEO um, and never even experiment with pay-per-click, or if they do, they give it a small budget and have a go themselves. And I think once you explain to them that there's a lot more to it, um, the audience is usually very receptive. And I, I'm always very upfront with people and I tell them, you know, I can't guarantee it's going to work for your business. I can get you to number one on Google, I can get you to number three on Google. We can give it a trial, try it with a small limited budget and see if it works. But there's no guarantee it's going to work. There's no guarantee that you can monetize it. It's like any other form of marketing or advertising. You should try it in small doses and see if it works for your business. Right then, we found our keywords, uh, we've used AdWords to actually find them, and, or maybe in your case we've come to you and we've, got, we've, we've shelled out for WordStream or one of the other proprietary brands that are out there. We now want to implement it. Your recommendation, I take it then, is do a trial. Trial, test, test, test. We always suggest that we, we don't do long-term contracts. We're, we're as good as our last month's results. And if, and if it's not working, you stop it. So. A full week trial is our basic starting point and it's what we always recommend to people. That's usually sufficient. Depending on your type of business, you might not see the money coming in at the end of four weeks. If you're an estate agent, then the lead time between somebody visiting your site and actually writing you a cheque might be four or five months. But you'll at least see inquiries coming in. If people are coming to your website and they're not inquire, inquiring, the phones are not ringing, the emails are not coming in, then it's not working. It's not a case always of it's not working, so give up. Try different things. Try different keywords. Try a different approach. Try and change the content of your website. But back to the basics, before you even start, and before we start with any client, we have a look at the website, and sometimes we say, okay, well, of course we can start a campaign for you, but before we do, I suggest you look at the content of the site, the landing page, where are we going to take them if this is the search? You say you do this, but actually it's hidden behind this, this and this. Are so there a lot is of the navigation intuitive? Are there a lot of people who will do a campaign and then drive them to their home page instead of to a sales funnel or, or a squeeze page? That's another, another one of many mistakes in homegrown campaigns is just take them straight into the home page. Take them to the most important, most relevant page. But then again, I had this with a client that I was explaining it to yesterday. They've put all the unique selling points on the home page. They've then got the most relevant product page. So if we take them using pay-per-click to the most relevant page, all the selling points are lost. So anything that you want to get over to the client about why they should buy this product needs to be on the page that they're going to arrive on. You've got seconds, as with any form of online marketing, you've got seconds when they arrive on the site to capture their imagination. And one of the most basic mistakes people make in a location-based business is they, the, on the, the service pages, they don't say where they're operating. So if you go to the contact us, it says, yes, we're in Leicestershire. 
I had a, a cleaning company once. They, they were running a paperclip campaign. They couldn't understand why they weren't getting any inquiries. Nowhere on the site at all, except the contact us page, did it say where they were based. Do you know, I was looking at a site the other day, and what they did, they had, I don't know whether this is good or bad, actually, but what they'd done, they'd duplicated a page. And, uh, for instance, they would say, the number one XYZ in Basildon, available for weddings in Basildon, car hire in Basildon. And then there was another page on the website which was identical to it, which would be for Leicester, available in Leicester, weddings, you know, and it was an exact duplicate, but each one was specific to the individual town. Okay. Is that just a bit of a, is that just a bit well, of a no, con? Well, no, they're landing pages. Now, the difference is that you shouldn't really be able to see those on the, on the site. There's no need to have a menu for weddings, Basildon, Wes weddings, Romford, weddings, Essex, etc. Well, each, each area had its own but page. But you can have those as silent pages. So the page is there, but you don't need to confuse the visitor to the site by seeing the whole lot. So if somebody searches for a wedding in Basildon, we would deliver them direct to the wedding in Basildon page, and then they could see the contact us page and the our menus and all the other things from there. And there is it, a lot of naivety in, in terms isn't there, of about design, I think. Getting sort of off the off the subject a bit, but as you mentioned it, there's an SEO snag there in that Google don't like duplicate content. So mm. you would have to, what they call, and I can never pronounce this properly, canonicalize your pages so that you're saying to Google, we're not trying to duplicate this page a hundred times and hope that you're going to drive traffic to all of them. This is the source page. These are copies and they're just copies because we need to put in the different areas. All right. We, we've talked predominantly about Google this evening, mm. but it, it doesn't stop there when it comes to AdWords. There are other people doing it as well. I suppose the two big ones are LinkedIn and also Facebook. Yeah. They're the other people, and, and it's a different process there. I remember when we were talking about uh, LinkedIn on previous programs, as opposed to going for the buckshot effect that you do with Google, with LinkedIn it can be more targeted, can't it? Well, if we go back to where we were talking before about the difference between search related pay-per-click and display related pay-per-click. LinkedIn is display. There's no search involved. So if you create a LinkedIn pay-per-click campaign, you're saying, okay, let's define our demographic audience. So let's say, for example, you are a printer and you know that the majority of your clients are estate agents. So you might set up a campaign targeting specifically people in the estate agent sector. Within that, you might say to yourself, okay, well, the decision maker is always going to be, have the job title maybe of office manager or MD, etc. So you only show to people within that sector with that job title. And you might now say, well, actually, we don't want to deal with one-man bands. So we're only going to show to estate agent managing directors and office managers whose companies employ more than 20 people. So you select by the number of staff as well. You might then narrow it down by geography and say, we only want to show to those if they're in Greater London. So there's all sorts of ways to segment the demographic audience that you show the ad to. And then there's two ways to run the campaign. Do you want clicks, do you want to be spending your budget and getting people to your website, or do you want to use it as brand awareness? So if you just want to use it as brand awareness and get your, your name in front of these people so that when you do your other marketing, maybe you're doing a telesales campaign, they say, oh yeah, I've heard of that company. You don't have a strong call to action, you don't have a strong offer, you just show the ads. And you're showing the ads to that target audience, and because it's pay-per-click and they're not clicking, it's not really costing you anything. That's very clever. So that's a clever way of doing brand awareness, very, very cheap. LinkedIn will hate me for that, sorry LinkedIn. <laughs> They're not going to make much money out of that. But a very clever idea. <laughs> very, and what about Facebook? Same sort of thing. Um, I, I'm a, a bit old fashioned when it comes to this. I, I do believe that there's too many people trying to bang a square peg into a round hole. Facebook is business to consumer. LinkedIn is business to business. There are obvious exceptions. But generally speaking, if you're trying to sell pho photocopiers, don't try and sell them on Facebook, try and sell them on LinkedIn. People who are in, I'm sure your social media um, 
experts that come in and talk about this will, will agree with me in as much as people are in me mode when they're on Facebook and they're in business mode generally when they're on LinkedIn. I know I am. I know I don't go on LinkedIn to chat to friends. I go on LinkedIn, I'm thinking business. When I'm on Facebook, I'm doing the ice bucket challenge or I'm putting pictures of my kids on there. And I'm, I, okay, we're business owners, we never completely switch off. So if somebody shows me a business message and I'm the business owner, that's the exception. Fantastic. If it's of interest. Listen, it's been an absolutely fascinating, fascinating insight, uh, pay-per-click, Maybe some of the mystery has been opened up a little bit this evening. What we'd like you to do now is to look straight down camera number one, if you would. Uh, tell us who you are. Uh, tell us a little bit about the, the business. And also the key takeaways that we should be considering when it comes to pay-per-click management. That would be a big help for us this evening. Is that okay? Sure. All right, so take a breath and away you go. Good evening, Dan Smale of The Client Factory. We specialize in online marketing and in particular in pay-per-click. So this evening we've been talking about the different types of pay-per-click and it's important to realize that search pay-per-click and display are two very different animals entirely. On the one hand, you've got people searching for your products or services and obviously that's an ideal time to get in front of them. On the other hand, you've got display pay-per-click which uses different platforms like Google's display network but also LinkedIn and Facebook. That's proactive marketing there's no search involved, you're getting out there to an audience that you've defined that you want to show your message to. Some of the do's and don'ts and pay-per-click, you can of course try it yourself, it often isn't that cost effective. Um, there's an awful lot that you can learn about Google AdWords if you've got the time, but what do you value your time at? So do take some professional advice. It's very, very easy to spend money on things like AdWords. It's not always as easy to monetize it and get a result. Is, Is that, that it? Enough? A nice pause there at the end. We like pauses here on this program. <laughs> they add gravitas. Uh, I tell you, it's been absolutely fascinating this evening, Dan. It's, it's been an insight into finding out. You can find out all the details concerning uh, the, uh, the client factory just below this particular program. If you're watching us on YouTube, do not forget to subscribe. Uh, if you're watching us on our channel, don't forget to sign up as well. Each month, uh, we're giving one of our subscribers an opportunity to get themselves a fantastic program, a little mini video all about themselves that we'll produce especially for them. Uh, to find out more, just go to our website. That's www.businessconnectionslive.com. And if you'd like a program just like this one for your business, then also uh, get in touch with us at that web address. Uh, or you can email us at studio at businessconnectionslive.com. On the program next week, it's uh, Bullet Osman is going to be joining us. We're going to be talking about apps. The App Garden is the company that he runs, operates and owns. Uh, we're going to be talking about how you get an app for your business up and running, uh, be it on Android, be it on your iPhone, on iOS, wherever it's going to be. Does your business need an app? Have you thought about getting an app? Maybe you've got content that you want to get out to your customers. Well, if you have, then maybe Bullet's going to be able to help you out from the App Garden. That's on next week's edition, live at 6 o'clock, right here on Business Connections Live. But from all the team, pretty much wraps it up for another evening. It's been a fascinating night. Uh, once again, Dan, thank you very much indeed for your time. Hope you found something useful out of that. We're going to be back again next week with more great information for you and your business. But from all the team and me, Steve Island, it's bye for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>